That's my other aunt. And my sister is here. Oh, yay. Hi, Deborah. Thanks for joining us, everybody. We'll, we'll get started in just another minute or so. We'll wait to see for some more arrivals. Um, if you have any questions for Morgan at any time, you can put them in the chat or the Q&A. We'll make sure she answers those. Can I throw out questions? Is that an option? Or do I have to answer all of them? Oh, I, I guess you can be selective. You can choose. No, I'll answer them. And then um, you just let me know when, um, when to do what with your, with your slideshow. Um, well, you can just lead it, Robin, um, as you answer questions. I mean, you can see it. I can't see it, so you can. So you just lead away, and I'll answer what is on the screen. All right. Sounds good. All right. So it's 1030 on the dot, so we'll go ahead and get started. Thanks so much again to everybody that's here with us. Thanks for joining us. Uh, my name is Robin Ehrlich. I'm the Education Manager at Pacific Whale Foundation, and this is the first of our career series interviews. And so these, through these interviews, we're hoping to give you an opportunity to get to know our staff members in a different way than you normally do. So for example, you may have seen an interview earlier this week with Morgan Whitmer, who's going to be our interviewee today, um, but you may not have gotten to know really uh, how she ended up where she is. That's kind of what we miss a lot. And a lot of people aspire to careers in marine science or ocean conservation and wonder, how do I get there? What do I have to do? What do I have to study? Um, and there are really a lot of different pathways. And that's kind of the fun part of it. A lot of our team members at Pacific Whale Foundation have had quite a, a winding path that led them to where they are today. Um, so I'm hoping that we can kind of, you know, see that side of our team members, get to ask some questions here. Um, so I want to introduce Morgan Whitmer to you all, for those that don't already know her. She is our Eco Tours Manager for Pack Whale Eco Adventures. Um, and she's gone above and beyond here. I asked her if she had maybe a few pictures she could share with us, and she's got quite a few to bring us through her journey. So Morgan, if you want to introduce yourself. Well, hi everyone. I'm Morgan Whitmer. As Robin said, I am the Eco Tours Manager here at Pack Whale Eco Adventures which is the for-profit branch of our nonprofit parent company, Pacific Whale Foundation. And so I am in charge of all of our uh, vessel staff, all the crew that work on the vessels, and our reservation staff, so our customer care staff. So if you've had the good fortune of going out with us, um, any of the staff that you've interfaced with, anyone that's inspired you and surprised you and taught you um, are the wonderful colleagues that I get to work with. And I've been with the company for 11 years, almost 12, coming in May. And I plan on being here a lot longer. So I'm very fortunate. Yes, and, and we're super fortunate to have you, Morgan, as well. And um, I liked to, I thought it was fun with these to kind of think about what you wanted to be when you grew up and see how you got from there. So Morgan, can you tell us what you wanted to be when you grew up? And actually, I'll, I'll bring us to your lovely presentation that you've made. Okay, great. Um, So this is just my favorite picture of me with one of my favorite animals, um, a Hawaiian green sea turtle, um, an avid scuba diver, and a total turtle nerd. So uh, that's what led me down the path that got me um, to Pacific Whale Foundation. Uh, but when I was a little kid, what I really wanted to be, and it was all inspired by, you know, parents telling you, you know, you can be whatever you want to be. Just what do you want to be? You can do it. Believe in yourself. And so what I really wanted to be was a lion. Um, and I, I didn't really fully understand or grasp the concept that I couldn't be a lion, but I really liked the idea of it. They're big, they're fluffy. I loved cats. And so when I would tell people this, I'm not sure if it was my parents, whoever, I explained that I wanted to be a lion because I liked the mane. And they said, well, that's, that's a male lion. First of all, you, you can't do that. And that, that was the first hit. I was pretty bummed about that. And then they explained that I couldn't actually be an animal which I was really bummed about because they told me I could be whatever I wanted to be. So I felt a little, a little betrayed on that one, um, but un I understood. Apparently it runs in the family because my, one of my favorite uncles, Uncle Eric, uh, wanted to be a tiger. So uh, apparently it's a, a family thing. Um, so then they told me that I needed to be a, a human. And so um, I thought really hard about what I wanted to be. And my next goal in life was to be an ancient Egyptian. And so, um, 
I was totally obsessed with ancient Egypt when I was little. I checked out the same book a thousand times from the library. I basically wanted to be Cleopatra. And then it was told to me that, number one, you can't be ancient because that was a long time ago and this is today. So you can't be ancient. You can't be an Egyptian because you're not from Egypt. So it was like three major hits in a row on my career aspirations. So I had to start looking elsewhere. Um, and so I'm not a lion. I'm not an Egyptian. But my path towards marine biology did kind of set pretty early. So I think I have some pictures of when I was a little, little tiny one. Um, so there's me as a baby. I have a 10 month old now that looks almost identical to that. But here's a couple of cute little pictures and the picture of me in the pool. I was always outside. I was always with cousins. And one of my aunts sent me this picture um, when I started working on the boats looking for turtles. And she said, well, when you were little, you were hanging out in a turtle pool, hanging out with boys in a bathing suit. So you're basically doing the same thing. I always really liked that picture. And I figured no no interview is complete without a half naked picture of someone so i definitely had to include that and then um this picture down here is me at sea world um one of my favorite things about this picture is that i'm missing a sock and i'm wearing a visor which is so like 1985 it's really great and um sea world my aunt um, patricia my aunt annette um used to take me to sea world when i was a little kid and i it really it it really got me into the ocean. And, you know, I know a lot of people have a lot of different feelings about animals in captivity. And certainly we're in a different place now than we were in 1985 in the early 80s or 90s. But, oh my gosh, I just loved it so much. I loved all the animals. And um, I don't look super stoked there, but I, I really did love it. It's a good so. <laughs> to share on that too. Thank you for that. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, I was just a nerdy little, little kiddo. I think my parents knew that I was going to be into animals or nature or science um, as a little kid. And um, I always laughed at this picture because I look like a, a tiny little student ready to go. I love um, the Highlights magazine. That's classic. Yeah, really into that. The classic Apple. Um, so let's, so when I went to graduate school, which I'll talk about later, um, I studied sea turtles and I wrote my master's thesis on sea turtles. And this is, um, uh, didn't really surprise a lot of my family members. And my mom actually said to me, um, well, this isn't the first time you wrote a book about turtles. And uh, I was like, oh, really? And she's like, no, no. And she ends up digging up this book for me. And um, I vaguely remember being mildly obsessed with turtles when I was little. And I had a little pencil that had like a little topper on it that was a turtle. And it fell off the pencil and I kept it in a cardboard box. And I like fed this little pencil and I took care of it. And I really really wanted a turtle and no one got me a turtle so my um, devious little mind decided to write a book about turtles so Robin if you click on it I'll actually go through the book that I wrote this was 1986 absolutely a book by Morgan um, let's see so uh, here's a picture of her home what was interesting was later when I did my master's degree I studied habitat selection so I was clearly doing the same thing back then um, and it's a flip book. You can see like a little hatch up there. Um, I'm studying green sea turtles, clearly. Uh, that's supposed to be my hand feeding the little sea turtle. And I would go on later to taking care of sea turtles in a facility in South Florida during my graduate career. So I was basically doing the same thing. Um, please come in. Here's a little flip door. I was into hospitality then, just as I am now. Uh, so welcoming people in. And then here's my little turtle snoozing in its little bedding. Um, and then years later in 2016, I wrote my master's thesis about sea turtles and sargassum seaweed as a habitat. So it's basically the same book that I wrote. Uh, so no surprise. Um, yeah, Robin, if you have questions, let me know. Otherwise, I can just tell you about these ridiculous pictures. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, basically, you know, we, I think I'd love to hear about the journey that you got there. You know, as I mentioned, a lot of people kind of think I want to work in marine science. For me in particular, I kind of thought, you know, just major in marine biology, get a job. And that's, that's not quite how it goes. And sometimes the journey is, is what leads you to where you end up. And that's kind of a big part of it. So um, yeah. keep in mind, you know, along the way, if you have any advice for anybody that's in, aspiring to a career in one of these areas, that's super helpful. Yeah, definitely. Um, I liked I wanted to include these pictures because they're nerdy reminders of 
uh, me loving, you know, animals and nature. And I really think my love of biology of nature, of just kind of exploring, um, came from when I was a little kid and going to the beach. And um, on my dad's side of the family, we used to do trips to South Florida um, or to Florida, and we would go to the beach for a week. And I'll never forget my mom, who loves animals, she loves animals more than anyone I know, used to dig her hands in the sand and pick up coquina clams. And if anyone's been spending any time in Florida, you've seen the little clams that burrow back down into the sand every time the water washes up. So she'd dig her hands in and then hold them in her hands. And I would see them like wiggle down into her hands. And I just, I freaked out. I just, I thought it was so cool. There were animals everywhere. And that kind of latched. There was something about, you know, the seashore that I really liked in those trips. And um, so, you know, I'm making, you know, shark sand castles and being a total goofball on a snorkel boat. Like these were things that, you know, I, I did, you know, when I was really young and I, when I was in elementary school, I learned all the bones of the body and all the animal groups. And um, I remember I freaked out my parents once when they told me to stop eating dirty snow in the yard. They said to be careful not to eat the dirty snow. So I got a bunch of Tupperwares and I put snow in the Tupperwares and I labeled the Tupperwares of where the snow came from in the yard. And then I let the snow evaporate. And then I looked at the Tupperwares to see which ones were the dirtiest. And then I didn't eat snow from that side of the yard but the cleanest Tupperware was apparently the cleanest snow. And so I designed this model to know how to eat snow in a yard. And I think I kind of freaked my parents out a little bit being the little scientist, just so I could eat snow. And, and that is clever, but those types of experiments probably sound like something for anybody that had, still has snow around that they might want to be doing or encouraging their kids to be doing. You should definitely check the dirt and other contaminant levels of your snow, wherever, wherever you are. And I grew up in Colorado. Um, so, you know, I was more familiar with terrestrial animals and pika and bighorn sheep and, you know, animals like that, not necessarily marine biology. So for marine, marine biology and SeaWorld and the people that rescued animals and taught people about animals there was kind of far-fetched. Like, how would I ever do anything like that? I'm from Colorado. Um, but um, I loved going to Florida. I loved going to the tropics. I loved doing stuff like that. And prior to going to University of Colorado, when I was in high school in Broomfield, Colorado, my parents encouraged me to go to, we called it whale camp. And it was a camp in the San Juan Islands off of Seattle. And we had been on some whale watches there. And I totally freaked out because I saw orcas for the first time. And um, I don't think I have a slide on that one. Um, but there was this girl on this boat and she totally spazzed out about whales. She was up there. She was a naturalist. She was, you know, really stoked about animals. And I thought, I want to be that girl. That was so cool. She was so excited. And I bought some orca boxers that I wore for the next 20 years. And then my parents were like, Morgan, you should go to whale camp. And I was really scared to do it. I was like 15 or 16 and I'd never done anything like that. And I remember asking a friend, um, should I, should I go and do this? And they were like, oh no, I would never do that. And just by their response, that made me wanna do it. And I was like, well, I don't wanna be that person. I, I wanna go do stuff. And so I went to this camp, I flew in on a little plane that landed on the water. I camped on Spiden Island for two weeks. I had an orca swim under my kayak. Wow. I, you know, I did all these, I had turkeys on, outside my tent. And it was the first experience that I had that I realized it's okay to step outside of your comfort zone. And that's probably the best advice I can give to young aspiring biologists, um, marine biologists, anyone, anyone that's looking for a career or something, um, is step out of your comfort zone a little bit. And fortunately, I had parents that helped me do that safely. And I heard Stephanie, um, our chief scientist the other day say in her presentation about women in science, that she had parents do the same for her. They kind of pushed her limits a little bit. And that's what my parents did for whale camp. Um, so I ended up going to CU Boulder because I wanted to stay a little bit closer and I was actually going to go, I wanted to be a doctor originally. I thought that might be cool, but I started studying molecular biology and I didn't like it. And I was really frustrated with the classes and I went home one day to my dorm and I saw a squirrel outside my window and it was like digging and it was bearing nuts everywhere. And I kept thinking, I wonder who knows which nut is where. And I wonder if older squirrels are better at it. And I wonder how it finds the nuts. And so I decided I need to study animals. I need to just, you know, study nature. 
And so that's what I did instead. I changed my major that day to environmental biology and organismic biology. And I went to Costa Rica, which is the picture you see there. And I uh, volunteered and I lived there for four months and took care of, um, I studied ants. Super exciting. Um, and I went to Australia with my parents and held koalas and pet kangaroos. And I worked in Costa Rica for a long time, like I said, through a Duke University class. And so I got some really good experience in the tropics. So now I love nature and now I love the tropics. Now I want to be a marine biologist. So I think I was like starting to go down, down a course. How did you find out about those experiences? Um, for the whale camp, which actually doesn't exist anymore, but there are a ton of wonderful camps out there, uh, including one that I worked at. Um, I think my parents found out about it through the Natural History Museum in Denver. And I'm sure now on the internet, you could just Google marine science camp and come up with a million options. There's a, there's a ton of really good ones, but my parents found out about that through the museum. And then the Duke tropical ecology course that I also did in Costa Rica, um, that I found out about that through college. It was actually on a bulletin board in the hallway and I actually bothered to stop and look at it. And then again, step out of my comfort zone and travel to a country by myself to go live with a bunch of strangers. Uh, and when you do that a couple times, you realize it's okay. They're all on their own too. And all we have is our suitcase and our personalities. So uh, it turned out to be pretty easy. So those were opportunities that were in my face that I actually took. And that, that's good advice, I would say. Definitely. I just want to stop to mention in the in the screen that I'm in, I can't see our chat and our questions. So Morgan, if you're able to, if anybody has questions, if people have already added questions, I'm not able to monitor that at the moment. So feel free to check in over there, ask questions if you have any. And in the meantime, I will advance the slide. And when you're ready to get back to it, these are some more cool experiences I can tell that you've had that led you to working with turtles. Yeah, so um, I so I went to college and I loved it and I loved the terrestrial biology, but um, I had the good fortune of visiting Hawaii um, with my parents on vacation. And the first time, you know, we opened the curtains in the morning and I saw the view of Maui and the Hawaiian Islands, I was just totally hooked. And so a neighbor friend had worked for the um, Hawaiian Islands, um, Hawaii Island Hawksville Project in Volcanoes National Park. So I actually ended up doing a season on the big island, um, hiking out to these remote beaches, sometimes as much as, you know, 11 miles and staying for three days at a time to watch Hawksville sea turtles lay their eggs and tag uh, the moms. And it was awesome and I loved it. And then and now marine biology, the tropics, turtles, boom, like they're all like coming together. Was that um, your first time in Hawaii? I had done trips with my parents. Um, I think it was about 13 or 14 and had done, you know, various trips with them. Um, and this was, I was about, I just graduated from college. So I was about 21 when I did this. Excellent. I see a question over here in the chat. Uh, Morgan, when are you announcing your campaign for president of the United States and how can I volunteer? Oh, that's an excellent question. Um, you know, I'm thinking another eight years probably. Uh, and then, then I'll get that campaign going. I'll have a turtle probably on the, um, on my slogan. My, so keep a lookout for that. I love it. We're, we're all here for that. We're all on team Morgan. Um, so gosh, I remember sitting at home in Boulder, Colorado, and it was cold. Boulder is beautiful and it's wonderful, but it doesn't have an ocean. And I was starting to get hooked on that. And so I remember going on the internet and writing cool marine biology jobs. And I came up with Sea Camp um, and New Harbor Marine Institute on Big Pine Key, Florida, which is um, in the Florida Keys, about 26 miles north of Key West. And it's a camp for kids uh, throughout the summer. And it's for 12 to 17 year olds. And I went down and I was a science instructor for four months. And it was awesome and it was so great. And I taught herpetology and marine communities and arts and crafts and I became a lifeguard. I got dive certified, I became a rescue diver, a skin dive instructor. I was actually a little bit scared of the water after an experience in Costa Rica. And I thought like, no, I'm not gonna be scared of the water anymore. That's inhibiting my marine biology life. And so I went to the Florida Keys and became a lifeguard. Um, little sidebar, it's actually where I met uh, who would become my future husband. 
Uh, we didn't date back then. This was in 2003, uh, but he worked at that camp and we would find each other later at Pacific Whale Foundation. Um, and all that was from a Google search randomly for cool marine science camps? I just typed cool marine science camp. Um, and it's cool. We've had a lot of staff members at Pacific Whale Foundation that have either worked at Sea Camp or went to Sea Camp. Um, it's a really great camp and it's one of so many. And I think if you just, you know, Google marine science camps and then you take the leap, you'll go hang out with kids um, that are passionate kindred spirits that love doing this stuff. And that camp was so fun. I would have loved it as a kid. I mean, we basically snorkeled all day and did arts and crafts and ate yummy food and kayaked and caught sharks and it was so cool. It was, it was a cool experience. So I'd recommend that for any kids. And I know there's some good ones in California and all along the East Coast. Uh, all by so definitely do those things. I saw London raise their hand. If you have a question, you can send that to us in the Q and A or in the chat and Morgan will be happy to answer it for you. Um, so yeah, I, I would definitely re recommend Florida, but Florida wasn't perfect for me because I love the ocean, I love the tropics, I love turtles, I love marine biology, but I also still love Colorado, so I needed some mountains. And so I spent, you know, the next couple of years like getting in the ocean, you know, diving as much as I could, um, snorkeling as much as I could. And I would definitely recommend for anyone interested in marine biology um, to get dive certified or at least be very comfortable snorkeling because there's so much to explore. Um, underwater that you can just have some really cool experiences and the picture of me holding on to the pole is in Indonesia and that's some of the best and most amazing diving I've ever seen the most diversity in life and uh, so I highly recommend getting dive certified just so you can see what's under there. Great recommendation. So let me know how long you've been doing this so your current position which we didn't focus on too much today but how long have you been doing that or even when did this kind of journey start? The pack whale journey? Yeah, I guess either one, but we'll kind of get there, but yeah. Yeah, so um, I have been working for Pacific Whale Foundation, uh, Pack Whale Eco Adventures for, um, it'll be 12 years in May. And um, I moved from Florida to be here and I started as a naturalist on the boat and I'll show some pictures of that. And I uh, worked on the boats for six and a half years. And I loved it. I was out there doing whale watches, snorkel trips, leading guided reef tours, um, talking to people about you know, our different campaigns and how they can join us in the ocean conservation movement. And we carry you know, over 300,000 people a year. So it's such a tremendous platform for a young nerdy biologist, a passionate soul to go out and talk to people. And I really felt the tremendous power of that. Um, and I definitely stood on my soapbox and taught people, you know, all I could, have, mostly about turtles. That was my, the biggest thing I talked about. Um, so I worked on the boats for six and a half years. And then I was too pregnant to work on the boats anymore with my first, um, my first baby, Kailea. And so I got relegated to the office full time into a wonderful position, um, taking care of our naturalist and uh, purging staff. And I've been doing that ever since. Excellent. And that's a great segue, actually. London added to that question, is this fun to you? And what do you do? Do you take care of marine animals? So I kind of know your question about taking care of marine animals, but that might be a good segue to this next slide. Oh, I missed one. Almost. I'll, I'll hop over for now. And if you want to go back there, we'll go back. Oh, yeah. So um, after I went to, um, so we can talk about grad school. So I did a bunch of stuff and then my dad said, Morgan, go to grad school. And uh, so, um, so I went to graduate school and I studied sea turtles uh, at Florida Atlantic University. And um, I'll just quickly say, you know, I, for anyone out there that's looking for advice on how to pick a graduate school, um, I can provide some advice there. And it's usually the number one trick I'd say is read papers that interest you um, and find out where those people work and then go work with them. And that's how I found Florida Atlantic. So I worked with sea turtles out in the field um, and in a lab. So I got to take care of animals there. And I'd done a lot of volunteering. I took care of animals at the Humane Society and wildlife centers before. But this is when I really got my hands like literally on animals, on sea turtles. Um, and then Robin, if you want to go to the next one. Yes. Um, after I graduated, um, of course, what you do after you get your master's degree in marine biology, you know, obviously, is you go become a primate zookeeper at the Palm Beach Zoo in Florida. 
Um, so I took a little break from my marine biology path to do a job that I always wanted to do. And honestly, I think of this job so much um, because it was, it was just so fun. And Robin's actually worked at the Palm Beach Zoo as well. So we, have, we never overlapped, but we, we walked the same grounds. We know the same sloth. That's, that's Wilburina. Yeah. Uh, and so I became a primate zookeeper and I took care of red rough lemurs, which you see hanging on my arm there, um, uh, which is a type of primate. And then Wilburina, which is a sloth, not a primate, but related to anteaters and armadillos. Uh, I took care of prairie dogs. I took care of peacocks. I took care of deer and birds. And it was just, it was just the best job. And I got exposed to a lot of science and more teaching and more presentations. Um, yeah, that's yeah. something that Palm Beach Zoo actually does a really good job at, I believe. And so I think that was a great segue for you back to, or not back to, but to PWF and to Pack Whale Eco Adventures. Yeah, absolutely. I just, I taught, I did a lot of presentations on the animals and their biology to the public. And so I got very familiar with kind of talking about natural history and animals. And it was just kind of fun being the, the nerdy zookeeper to have all the treats and could feed all the animals. And it was a really fun job. I definitely recommend if you love animals, you know, volunteer at humane societies, volunteer at wildlife centers, volunteer at farms. Um, you can volunteer at zoos a lot. There's, um, I don't know, Robin, did you do the camp at the Palm Beach Zoo? Yes. Yes, yeah, so, we have a, a pretty big camp there. Now, me, I'm not there anymore, but there, there is a pretty large camp there during the summer and I think during the school breaks now too. Yeah, so uh, just get involved in those things and um, being in contact with animals, you know, is so peaceful and wonderful and fun. And I didn't want to go the veterinary route, but it sure was fun to, to do the teaching and the taking care of animals like I did there. Um, and that definitely helped me on my quest to get to Hawaii um, Hawaii was still on my mind. That's what I wanted to do. And I was kind of ready to move out of South Florida. And I saw a job posting for Pacific Well Foundation. And I had had some friends that, that worked there. So I applied. And I uprooted my life in South Florida, which was kind of scary. And I actually applied for a job um, at Disney World. Wow. You know, at the Living Seas. And so I was going to either do that job or move to Hawaii. Uh, and one was safe because it was closer and one was scary and new. And this was another one of those step out of your comfort zone because the rewards are big. And so with the help of my family and my parents, um, they helped move me to Maui. And I started at Packwell Eco Adventures 12 years ago. And um, so there's me teaching on the boat. Uh, and you can see me in front of a crowd. I was doing our coral reef and fish ecology presentation. And I love that picture because, you know, if you had the ability to zoom in, there's so many stoked people in that picture. They're just like, coral pull up, oh my gosh, it's so amazing. <laughs> and it was so fun to work on those boats. And um, so now I get to take care of those staff that do that now. And I get to support them and make sure they have all the tools they need to be excellent naturalists. Um, so that was so fun. I love that. I kind of miss it. And we're so excited to have you and your enthusiasm was contagious when you were out on, on the vessels doing things like that, but you're also a great asset in where you are now. Thank you. So I have a couple more questions here from London, um, which you may have touched on or will as we go past. Um, do you like this amazing job and how do you breathe so long underwater? Also, how do you take pictures under the water? Uh, yes, I love my job. It's absolutely amazing. Um, my favorite part are the people that I get to work with. Um, we're all just total science nerds, nerds in the big, the best, you know, sense um, that we just love nature. And every time we're together, I mean, here's some pictures of some like, you know, people that I worked with. Um, we just, we go out and we love nature and the people that I work with now, they're just going out and doing amazing jobs every day. So it's just the best place to be. And every day you go home with the warm fuzzies and, you know, I get to work with people like Robin and the education department who does these amazing ocean camps and Cakey Whale Watches, which is one of our really amazing programs we do every year. And you just think like, this is totally worth it. This is exactly what we should be doing. And there are a lot of jobs that you just go to a job, but this is one that like feels like real warm and fuzzy. Um, and how do I breathe underwater? Was that the question? Yes, how you breathe so long underwater. Yeah, so I, I can hold my breath for about 45 seconds underwater unless I see a sea turtle. 
Um, and then I get pretty distracted and then I get that, oh my gosh moment when I need to get back to the surface. So I can go about a minute and a half if I'm watching a sea turtle. Um, my husband, who I met at Pacific Whale Foundation, he can hold his breath for about two minutes and he's like a dolphin. Uh, there he is. Um, so he is also an ocean nerd. This guy can hold his breath for a really long time. Uh, he'll dive down, I'll come down and see him, then I'll go back up, then he'll invite me back down and he's still like looking at stuff. It's pretty incredible. And um, he happens to be, his name is Josh and he's the longest running Nachos at Pacific Whale Foundation. So he's actually going on 16 years of narrating um, whale watches and teaching people about the ocean. And we're such ocean nerds, we had to think like, where do two ocean nerds get married? Um, and we check out some hotels and they're expensive and like, where do you put your money in this, such an event? Uh, and so we got married at the aquarium. And yeah, gorgeous. Yeah, and that my dress was meant to look like water and I have a cool sash on my uh, stomach with sea turtle beads and there's sea turtles in my necklace. And I actually, for one of my pictures that I didn't put in, I was holding a sea turtle instead of the bouquet um, and it was just awesome. And um, so now, you know, now it's home sweet home. And here's just a couple pictures of my kiddos. Um, Kailea is the one in the middle. And she, Kailea means ocean princess, loosely. Uh, and then I have a 10 month old right now, Leilani. And as you can see, she gets whale art from me. Um, there's a humpback whale there. Uh, I don't know if she appreciates it as much as, as I do, but she will someday. So, Absolutely. Yeah. They're my two ocean nerds. Love it. So I've got a did couple more questions. Oops, sorry, did I cut you off? Oh, I just wanted to make sure I got all of London's questions. I think we have one more. So, and this one is related to sharks. Wondering if you, how do you not get bit by sharks or do you even mess with them? Do you even go near them? Yeah, good question. So, um, I have never been bit by a shark and I've never even gotten close to being bit by a shark, but I swim in the ocean often. And um, obviously there are sharks in the ocean. And so they're such an important part of our ecosystem. We definitely need them around. Um, but the important thing is to know how to respect them and give them their space. Most of the sharks that we see around here, particularly the white tip reef shark, that's a really common one. Um, they're total scaredy cat, puppy dog sharks. I was snorkeling on Mala Ramp um, once and I was like looking on the bottom and I ran head first into a white tip reef shark. We both just kind of looked at each other shocked and I think I startled the poor guy as much as uh, he startled me. Um, you know and I, I make good choices about when I'm in the water. I don't swim when the water's murky or at dusk or dawn just because that's their place at that time. But swimming with friends and going to con you know popular snorkel <laughs> sites with a bunch of people um, you know, these are all safe options and I've actually done some cool shark dives. I've dove in the shark tank at the aquarium. I did a shark dive off of Oahu. I've seen incredible sharks in Indonesia. They're really amazing animals to be near. Uh, and I don't think we have to worry about them. Um, they kind of have to worry about us more than we would need to worry about them. Excellent. And I'm glad that we had a question about that. I always like to give sharks some love. We focus a lot on marine mammals, but Sharks are really important to the ocean, like you said, and they do deserve a lot of respect and care from us. So that was amazing. Yeah, definitely. We've got a great question from Becca. I think this one will be fun for you, although you might have to do a little thinking 12 years back. Um, what's okay. one of your favorite memories from your very first season with us? Um, I'm not sure if it was my first season. It was pretty close. But I remember we used to do this trip to Molokini, which is a tuft cone, a crater um, off of um, McKenna, South Maui. And then we would make the long trek over to Lanai, the island of Lanai, which is across from Lahaina, essentially. And this was such a long trip. It was a seven hour snorkel trip and the, oh my gosh, the, it was beautiful and it was amazing, but it was a long haul. And that day was fairly unsuccessful. Um, the goal is to hopefully see dolphins off of the Lanai coastline and there's no dolphins that day. It was a rough ride back and we were just trying to make our passengers happy. And so we pulled up to a, um, the, the cliffs along the uh, west coast of Maui and the captain was like, Morgan, we're gonna look for some sea turtles. Will you just get on the microphone and get people like stoked about sea turtles? Because if I was on board, they were gonna give me the microphone to talk about turtles. Of course. And so uh, we had opened the bar, uh, We've given a couple extra cocktails to make people happy. It's, it's a trick that, that works pretty well. 
Um, and so people, you know, had an extra Mai Tai in them. And then I got on the microphone and I started talking about mysterious sea turtles and how they are ancient relics, you know, from millions of years ago and they're true dinosaurs. Do you want to see a dinosaur? And then I went to the story about how one out of a thousand survived to become an adult. And if we see a turtle, we are the luckiest people in the world. Like, oh my gosh, I hope we get to see this total survivor. And then I, I had polarized glasses on so I could see this turtle come up starting to come up. So I, I was like, oh my gosh, we're going to see it, guys. This turtle's coming up. Everyone, and I pushed people over to the side, probably, you know, 60 people. And then this turtle pops up and it's, it's just a tiny green sea turtle. I mean, probably, you know, a 50 pound turtle and people freaked out. And there were like lawyers on the bow, like chest bumping and like fist pumping. And they're like, turtle. And they were freaking out. And it was just a turtle taking a breath at the surface. And that's when I realized the power of interpretation, the power of a passionate naturalist to link a resource like a turtle, the ocean, back to people. Um, if you do a good job at it and you care about that craft, you can have like a lawyer from Milwaukee being like, oh, I saw a turtle, oh my God. And that happened pretty early on. And so I think I started taking my job pretty seriously, you know, from there on out, like find one of those moments every day, one of those aha moments and teach someone to love something as much as you do and try to get them to chest bump with a beer in their hand. That was kind of, that became the goal. That's amazing. It's such a great story. Thanks so much for sharing that. You're welcome. Um, I kind of, you already shared some advice along the way about, you know, finding opportunities and things like that. What about the people that we've reached and maybe even you've reached with your enthusiasm that have been out on eco tours with us and that do want to be you or Josh or somebody that works for us? What advice do you have for them? Um, you know, well, I mentioned, you know, getting out of your comfort zone and trying new things. Uh, I think there's often opportunities that present themselves to people to join a nature walk or to join a you know club or to take an online course or to go to a camp or to try a photography class you know there's all these opportunities or gosh should you know I was talking to um, emailing with a young lady Morgan Harbor I don't know if you're on here Morgan hi um, who was like should I go to Florida or should I go to Hawaii and I was like, well if you love Hawaii go just do it don't be scared go don't don't work in Orlando when you can work in Hawaii. And so I think grabbing those opportunities when you see them and not being scared to do it. And then, you know, my other advice is don't, don't stick to one job um, necessarily. I mean, you should kind of follow a course. You know, I've always been on the biology course, always been on the animal course, but you know, no one ever told me I had to do the same job forever. And so by doing a bunch of jobs, you know, working at a camp or a dive shop or the zoo, I got so much different experience and I was able to take it into this job and it makes me, you know, even better at this job. And then I'll take this experience later into another job, probably in a, you know, a distant chapter, but try different jobs, move to different places. You know, my dad said, if you don't like it, move back. And, you know, you're never trapped anywhere and there's always resources. So I think the biggest advice I can say is look for stuff and then don't be scared. Um, Excellent. Yeah. I like the, you know, not having to stick to one job. And on that note, and probably my final question for you is what's next for you? What are you most looking forward to? What are you excited about? Or what do you want to do next? Uh, it's a good question. So um, I'm excited um, about, you know, working with Pack Whale Eco Adventures, you know, into the future. We have um, a lot on our plate in terms of you know, educating more and more guests, moving towards green features on our vessels and in our offices, um, providing eco-friendly product. We're doing all these really cool things to kind of come into this new age of teaching people. We're using new teaching tools. Robin and I are going to be working a lot together, you know, on doing some kind of new education stuff. So I'm really excited about bringing that to kind of the, the forefront and working on that with a company that supports it. Um, one of my other dreams is to write a children's book. Uh, I come from a family of artists, and so I think Robin and I might work uh, on illustrating some uh, kid books, and she'll do the writing and education, and I'll help and do the drawings, so uh, that's somewhere in there. I just have to find some time to practice my drawings, 
Um, and so I plan on being with Pacific Well Foundation for a long time to help them into the future and train the next, you know, next group of people. I have some really wonderful managers and supervisors and staff that I work with. And I foresee them taking on some of my roles in the future and helping to build this, com you know, company as we grow. Uh, in the distant, distant future, I'm going to switch tracks again. I don't know when it's going to be. I'll be with PacWell for a long time, but I actually want to go back to school to become a nurse uh, and be a labor and delivery nurse. So that's just like another switch in the future. And that's me going back to my medical roots and the great experience I have with my babies. And so I don't know, maybe all my primate care and turtle care and all that will help me, uh, help me in the future. So 10, 15 years, you might see that happen. I think so. Well, that sounds amazing, Morgan. Um, I haven't seen any more questions in there, so I'll kind of put out a, a last call for questions as we wrap up. But I want to thank everybody for joining us this morning and getting to know Morgan a little bit better. If you do have any other questions for her that we don't get to in here, this will be going on Facebook afterwards. Morgan will take a look at that and she can answer some of your questions on there. You can also email her at Morgan Whitmer, M-O-R-G-A-N-W-I-T-T-M-E-R at, at packwhale.com, P-A-C-W-H-A-L-E.com. Um, if, if you wanna make sure that you stay in touch and you find out more about some of our other upcoming events, um, everything that we've been doing, all of these videos, all of our digital engagement is on our um, events page, pacificwhale.org slash events. Um, and during this unprecedented time, we're doing a lot of this, this virtual engagement and trying to keep things going. If you're able, if you'd like to support us, we do have a $5 fundraiser right now, pacificwhale.org slash donate. Um, please keep in touch. Uh, please join us for more of our virtual programs. Um, but that's all for me. Morgan, if you want to sign off, say aloha. Yeah, thank you everyone. And I know I have a lot of family here and I owe, you know, just a huge debt of gratitude to my family and friends for supporting me along the way. And um, so thank you to everyone, you know, not only for being here, but everything in the past. And um, like Robin said, we have that $5 fundraiser. You can always become a member or adopt an animal here. And our ocean store is open and doing really well. So if you feel like you need a little bit of ocean swag, um, I think that's that's a good option as well to help support our organization in these days. And then uh, when the world resumes uh, someday, Pacific Whale Foundation and Pac Whale Eco Ventures will emerge and we'd love to take you out. Excellent. Well, thanks so much, Morgan. Thanks so much again, everybody, for joining us. We'll hope to see you again in some virtual manner soon. Aloha. Aloha.